Hello, everyone. I'm Steve Churchin, Chief Product Officer and Chief Information Security Officer at CyPro. Thank you for taking some time out of your day today to join us on our 2023 Cybersecurity Roadmap. We're going to spend the next half an hour, 45 minutes or so, going through some of the new features and functionality of the Zygate product suite that we delivered in 2022 and what's upcoming in 2023. So our agenda today, we'll talk a little bit about Zypro. Most of you are familiar with Zypro as you're already customers if you're joining this presentation. We'll talk about new solutions that are available this year right now, primarily around PCI DSS 4.0, Zygate Security One in the cloud, and we've got some new technology around mission critical SAP HANA databases. And then we'll talk about our 2023 roadmap. We've got some great functionality that you guys have been waiting for coming up this year. So let's jump into it. Like I said, most of you are already familiar with Zypro. We're headquartered in sunny Simi Valley, California. That's just outside of Los Angeles. Our expertise are in mission critical environments. So HPE nonstop, which we've been known for for quite a while. And just recently, a new partnership with HPE that expanded our offerings through them around SAP HANA cybersecurity. So we'll talk about what that means and what the offerings are there. We're a globally distributed company. So we've got folks all over the world. Um, we're SailPoint CyberArt partner. As you know, we've got some offerings. And in fact, we've got the only certified integrations with SailPoint and CyberArc for nonstop. And then at the bottom of the slide, you're going to see a couple of new logos there, primarily Red Hat and SAP. And like I mentioned, we'll talk about the offerings there and what we're doing with both companies in a little bit. Zypro is your trusted security partner. Our focus areas are integration, modernization, and innovation. We've got a large customer base spanning the entire globe. We've got customers on six continents, and if there were servers in Antarctica, we'd have them on all seven. Like I said, 700 plus customers worldwide, global 24 by seven operation. And interesting statistic is we're fluent in over 25 different languages. So if you're comfortable talking to us in a language other than English, we've probably got somebody on our staff that can help you out. Like I mentioned, Zypro strategy is being your enterprise security partner. We're just not a vendor. We're not just providing tools to you. We wanna make sure that you're getting maximum value from your cybersecurity investments and it's really fulfilling your business objectives. Now in 2023, most companies are hitting at least one of these key areas, if not all three, most of you have an innovation project, a modernization project and an integration project. and emphasis on integration, what that really means is managing your IT assets across the enterprise similarly is not having disparate siloed solutions that, that need expertise or specialty tools to be able to manage them. And putting all three of these together and combining them is what Zypro's offerings through HPE can do for you. Okay, highlight of our roadmap, let's jump into it. So 2022, and we'll dig into details of this one in, in uh, the upcoming slides. Our focus in 2022 and available now it was on Security One cloud enablement. This will allow you to run Security One on-premise in the cloud. Uh, this can be a private cloud, this can be on, on Zypros cloud, and we'll talk about the details about that. We've got some enhancements around XUA multi-factor authentication, TLS 1.3 came into play last year. Um, that protocol is available along with some new ECC ciphers. We'll talk about Windows School and console monitoring and some enhancements around, again, modernizing authentication protocols. Okay, let's jump into it. New for 2023. This has been a hot topic for everybody. PCI DSS 4.0. If you missed our webinar about three weeks ago, please go to our website, zypro.com, catch up on it. We go into detail about what PCI 4.0 means in the nonstop world. But highlighting what PCI 4.0 brought into play for last year, it's the 18th year of the PCI DSS standard. It's the 10th iteration and took four years in the making. This took over 6,000 comments uh, or areas of feedback and three rounds of requests for comments. You know, guilty. I was probably a large majority of that. 
but it was all for good. It was all to enhance what the existing standard was and how to apply it to the new world, 2023 and beyond. And that's where you see a big difference is PCI DSS, the last standard 3.2.1 was only 139 pages. This one is 360 pages. Now that's a significant increase. And again, go check out that webinar from three weeks ago. And we go into detail about why it's increased so much. But one of the key areas is PCI DSS compliance is no longer a point in time activity. Most compliance frameworks are always looking backwards. They have these requirements in place because they're lessons learned from what has impacted us in the past. And we're trying to prevent that specific thing from happening in the future. No longer the case with PCI 4.0. Now, this gives you flexibility to start thinking of security in the modern sense, in a modern world. So zero trust methodologies come into play. Uh, a customized approach comes into play. The uh, Security Standards Council realized that prescriptive requirements were not fulfilling everyone's needs, where a company might have similar controls, not compensating controls. Now, that's different than a customized approach, but similar controls to fulfill the objective of the requirement. So if you dig into what customized requirements are or a customized approach is and how they apply to requirements, you'll realize that PCI will have a prescriptive description of how to meet the requirement but it'll give you the flexibility to use a customized approach to fulfill the objective of the requirement. That's very important. PCI DSS 4.0 comes with 64 new requirements. Now, 13 of them are effective immediately if you are me measuring against the 4.0 standard. Now, the existing standard 3.2.1 can still be evaluated against until March 2024. After March 2024, all assessments need to be done against PCI 4.0. 3.2 won't 3.2.1 won't fly anymore. 51 of those are best practices until 2025, where everything becomes a requirement. What does that mean? That's a mouthful, and there's a lot of activity there going from 139 pages to 360 pages. We've got a year. We're in February 2023 right now. This standard doesn't become mandated until uh, March 2024. We've got a year. The clock's ticking. So 2023 should be used as a transition period, is getting your environment ready for a PCI 4.0 assessment. In March 2024, 3.2.1, which is the existing standard, which has been in place for at least four years, will be gone, retired, no longer applicable. So you've got to use 4.0. Like I said, the clock's ticking. We've got to start getting our activity in place. One of the ways that you can accomplish that readiness activity and measure against 4.0 right now is through Zygate Security One. Most of you are familiar with Zygate Security One. This is our uh, comprehensive cybersecurity intelligence analytics and compliance platform for nonstop. Its main objective is to simplify all of the manual repetitive activity that we've been doing up to this point. It's no longer the case. Technology has improved. Um, cybersecurity methods have changed. We have to be able to leverage technology and machines to be able to do this analysis for us especially in the compliance arena. It doesn't make sense to go through log file after log file, Excel files, normalizing, normalizing data silos and generating hand reports. Um, it just, it's unsustainable. Security One has all of the tools necessary for you to be able to secure and become compliant with PCI DSS 4.0 on nonstop systems. Security One itself is a bundle. It comes with all the tools necessary to apply to secure your nonstop. So you've got Zygate access control, Zygate object security. You've already got merge audit, user authentication. These are the necessary components that generate the data to be able to assess against PCI 4.0. Without these tools in place, it's going to become a very manual, error-prone process, and you won't have the quality of evidence to be able to say you're PCI 4.0 ready. 
So once those tools are in place, they feed the data into the Security One application. Security One application itself has been enhanced with the PCI 4.0 framework. So you can go in, run a PCI 4.0 assessment if the data is available and get a report on what your posture looks like. On the right, you see a screenshot of a PCI 4.0 evaluation. You've got requirements one through 12 across the top, and you can see which ones have passed, which ones have failed. So I can see requirement eight has failed here. I can click on that red circle and get further details on which sub requirements are failing and why. So I can see it's 8.1 and I can see the reason why it's failing. So I can go in, take corrective activity, run another report and get a result and see that that requirement is no longer failing. This is available right now. Along with the enhancements to Zygate Security One, there's a ton of resources available on Zypro's website for compliance on PCI 4.0. Obviously, I mentioned Zygate Security One. We've got a PCI auditor's guide because the challenge in the past has been PCI auditors, QSAs primarily, are not familiar with the nonstop. They just don't know the concepts of how to secure, how to evaluate it. So this guide will simplify that process for them. It'll translate nonstop language into natural language, which everybody will understand and know which controls apply to what. Now, something new as of last month is our summary of changes for HPE nonstop. Now, PCI DSS or PCI uh, SSC rather, has published their summary of changes between 3.2.1 and 4.0. What Zypro has done is taken the entire PCI 4.0 standard and we've mapped those individual items, every single item to a nonstop control. So we're not, you're, we're not boiling the ocean here. We're giving you the, the framework of exactly what needs to be done on nonstop to be able to migrate from 3.2.1 to 4.0. This is the first and only document available for nonstop that does that goes into this detail. If you go on zypro.com, you'll see a link at the very top that says PCI 4.0. Go ahead and click on that and you'll have access to the document. It's completely free, available to everybody. We've also got a ton of articles, videos, and other uh, information available on our website. Like I mentioned, three weeks ago, we had a webinar focused just on PCI 4.0 and nonstop and what you need to do. Check it out, get familiar with it. Like I said, the clock is ticking. We also offer services around this. So we've got a PCI DSS security gap assessment. So where we go through comprehensive review of your systems, your applications, your users, your environment, and produce a gap assessment to know where you're gonna need to adjust or enhance your security uh, posture. So once you do that, we know then that we have a plan of attack, what we're going to do to be able to get compliant with 4.0. And we also offer hardening, hardening services as well. So we can put whatever that gap assessment uh, unveils, we can put that into action. So check it out, go to zypro.com, get access to this information, get informed. Okay. So I mentioned Security One in the last couple of slides, and most of you, like I said, are familiar with Zygate Security One. This is a um, our security intelligence, analytics, and compliance platform for nonstop. This is a browser-based application, nothing to install on your workstations. It runs on a, up to this point, it ran on-premise on a Windows server. But now Security One can be run on-premise or in the cloud. So this is an alternative to an on-premise deployment where you're responsible for procuring infrastructure, installation, configuration, security updates, et cetera. So this can be run now on-premise if you have a preference for that in your data center. It can be run in your private cloud. We have all of the readiness uh, and scripts and everything necessary to be able to deploy that, or it can be run on Zypros cloud, where you just uh, you're just it's almost like a, a SaaS offering where you just have a credential to log into a website, go in there and manage the um, consume the services. That's it. Zypro is responsible for installation, configuration, security updates, etc. You're just the one using the services. The thing with using Zypros Cloud, though, is we need access to the data. So you would need to have a tunnel set up between our environment and your environment to be able to shuttle data over to us. And once we have data, it's security one without you having to manage the infrastructure.
Okay, switching topics now and talking about multi-factor authentication. If you follow our articles, if you follow our LinkedIn, you know we've been shouting from the rooftops about the need for multi-factor authentication on everything. It's 2023. There is absolutely no reason not to have multi-factor authentication enabled if a provider offers it. It gives you the best security bang for your buck in today's world. So multi-factor authentication, as you're all aware, is something you know, something you have, something you are. Two, at least two out of those three. A password by itself is not good enough because a password by itself can be guessed and scarily enough more than just being guessed your password is probably floating out there on the dark web on a password dump list somewhere on the internet or some script kitty or somebody just a, a novice can pick it up and start trying to log in as you that second factor is going to prevent a password dump list from being valuable to anybody because even if they have the password if they don't have a second factor such as a token or biometrics they're not going to be able to log in now going back to the pci 4.0 standard you're going to see several requirements that tighten the controls around where multi-factor authentication needs to be applied previously it was at the perimeter now it needs to be applied at the perimeter, which means your VPN or however you get access to your network, and then again into the card data environment, the CDE. Now, I would advocate to take that even a step further. You log into the your VPN, you log in again with MFA into the CDE, and this can be a jump server or some other method, and then you should have a third one to be able to log into your application or whatever asset you're trying to log into, server or API or whatever, all of those should be also protected with multi-factor authentication. Again, it's gonna give you the best bang for your buck. Now on non-stop systems, all of you have Zygate user authentication. It's part of the operating system. It just needs to be configured, turned on, and now you have MFA capabilities for your operating system. We've taken that a step further now. This is something that customers have been requesting for a very, very long time, is being able to provide that same MFA capability to their mission-critical applications. So not just the operating system, but your applications like Base24, or if you have homegrown or custom applications that might not have the necessary components or technology or libraries to hook into MFA, this library now from uh, offered from Zypro and HPE will provide your applications the ability to authenticate using multi-factor authentication. Again, it's just a library, hooks into your authentication workflow. You put, type in your username and password, as we see here for Base24, and before you're authenticated, you're given a second prompt to enter your MFA credential. This can be a token, this can be biometrics, this can be whatever MFA provider you've hooked into. But only after you authenticate with that second factor are you able to log into the application. This is the most secure way to be able to protect your environment. So we've got at least three locations where MFA is enforced. We're moving towards a zero trust model now. You're authenticating and enforcing MFA in the perimeter the VPN or however get, you get into your network, you're doing a second one at your card data environment. So this can be your jump server, it can be another VPN, it can be a WAF, it can be whatever else you've got in place there. And then you're doing a third MFA before that user can access an application that can access data in the card data environment. Zero trust. We're, we're verifying every single way along the process. That way, if passwords are ever compromised, doesn't matter. They're useless. Without that second factor, they're complete garbage. So this library is available right now through HPE. Okay. Switching gears, talking about different mission critical environments, primarily around SAP HANA. Now, what I'm going to describe next is going to be, for those of you familiar with SAP HANA, is going to sound like a very, very common challenge that you've all had. And it's how to keep secure your mission critical SAP HANA workloads and the operating system underneath it. Now, this is a product developed by HPE 
And a couple of years ago, HP and Zypro expanded their partnership to be able to offer this and continue expanding on it. This is a product called Wazzle, Workload Aware Security Layer. Its main purpose is to secure and monitor your SAP HANA environments and the um, Linux operating system that it's running on. The challenge up to this point has been there's been no purpose-built solution for SAP HANA. Yes, there's benchmarks from CIS on how to secure the operating system, but then nothing for the workload itself. So you've got to go in and spend time and money on expensive SAP HANA experts to be able to take that 800-page SAP HANA guide and convert that to security controls. This product is focused on that. It's purpose-built for SAP HANA. It's complex to secure. You've got multiple different operating systems plus the workload on top of it. Just think about the challenges that produces. And like I mentioned, time consuming. You need multiple people to be able to do this. And it can take months, on average, a month to three months and even longer in larger, more complex environments. And it's error prone, very expensive. You can only imagine how expensive SAP HANA experts are. And then once you're set up, SAP is constantly releasing new updates, new versions. The operating system is changing. New RPMs are coming into play. New libraries are there. Who's going to stay on top of all of that? It's a, it's a never-ending struggle on the hamster wheel. And no automatic way to do this. That's why HPE and Zypro have come up with Wazzle, Workload Aware Security Layer. It's a one-click automated solution to secure the workload and the operating system underneath it. Not only that, it's got instant rollback capabilities. So if you deploy a configuration and it, um, and it affects something, it affects the workflow or it affects some other uh, configuration setting that was unintended, you can roll that configuration setting back with one click. So you can deploy and you can undo with a single click. Its policies are workload aware. So depending on the operating system, all the policies are there. If you're using SUSE, if you're using Red Hat, if you're using um, SUSE for SAP HANA, we've got special policies for each one of those uh, operating system and the policies can all be customized. And it's again, just like Security One, a central dashboard where all of your workloads and your operating systems can be managed from. So Wazzle, like I mentioned, is a one-click security compliance tool for SAP HANA workloads and, the app and other applications as well. It doesn't have to be just for SAP HANA. If you've got an interest in securing other workloads similar to this, let us know and we can enhance the product to, to get into those areas. Um, Wazzle was formerly owned by HPE. They developed this back in 2016, 2017 and have been selling it to the market quite successfully. Uh, a couple of years ago, Zypro and HPE partnered together on this uh, endeavor and continuing our success together, our partnership has expanded into new reaches. So we are proud to be able to offer this type of solution back into the market. Uh, highlighting, just summarizing what I just talked about, out-of-the-box compliance for Linux operating systems and SAP HANA, I mean, you'll be lucky if you can get 30%. And then once you start looking at the CIS benchmarks and the SAP HANA our hardening guide, I mean, good luck trying to map all of those to controls and getting that number over 50%. With Wazzle, with a single click, you can get both the operating system and the workload to get to over 90% compliance. Now that rest of the, the rest of the way to 100%, those are all customized configurations. For example, locations of your log files or specific to your environment, which can't be automated in a, in a tool like this. But 90%, over 90% is much better than 30% when you started. And all of this is done within minutes where traditionally you'd be spending three, four, maybe even six months to get to that point. Okay, Wazzle is available right now through GreenLake. So if this is something that you're interested in, please contact your GreenLake representative and they'll, be, uh, they'll make sure to put you, in the right, uh, put you in touch with the right person to get you access to Wazzle. Um, Wazzle is, is 
constantly enhanced by us. Like I said, the the operating systems and the updates, the service packs that are coming out to these operating systems are just nonstop. With all of these security vulnerabilities that are being publicized all over the place, this is a never-ending activity. Let Zypro and HPE take that work off your shoulders. Let us give you the new policies where you don't have to constantly have to pay expensive resources to, to take those hardening guides, to take those CIS benchmarks and map them to controls. Wazzl version 1.5 will be released here very shortly. It's going to have support for Red Hat 7, Red Hat 8, and SAP HANA 2.0. And then 1.6 coming shortly will have Microsoft Windows support, as well as Red Hat 9 support, as well as some improvements around the licensing. Again, if you're interested in this, if you want to check it out, if you want to tour, test drive, etc., reach out to Green uh, HPE GreenLink or reach out to Zypro if you go to zypro.com slash Wazzle and get information there. Okay, let's catch your break and talk about what's coming up in 2023. This is something that I know a lot of customers on this call have been waiting for is a REST API for Zygate Merge Audit. So up on this point, uh, the way to get data off nonstop and into another endpoint such as Splunk or ArcSight or Alien Vault, QRadar, et cetera, was using syslog or SNMP, but most people would typically use syslog. Um, SNMP, there's a few users out there, but it's it's quite data technology and it's insecure. Using syslog was the most common way to get data from all of these sources on the left over to the sources on the right. And this gave you integration, Splunk integration, right out of the box. Zygate Merged Audit is the de facto standard for sending data from nonstop into Splunk. Splunk. Uh, it's included with every HPE nonstop system. You've already got it. If you're not using Zygate Merged Audit to send data to Splunk, reach out to us right away. We can help you set that up. It's very simple to do. It doesn't take a lot of time, not a lot of resources from your site, and you're going to get immense value from that activity. Uh, and the capabilities of once you get data into Splunk are limitless. Go to our website. We did a webinar last year on the top five data, um, uh, the top five use cases on what you can do with nonstop data once it gets into Splunk. It's Splunk. It's really eye opening. You're going to go, "Wow, I wasn't aware that that was possible." But really, the the integration point is XMA. It's getting merged on it, installed, configured to be able to feed Splunk. Splunk. I don't know why I keep saying Splunk. <laughs> okay, so new for 2023, like I mentioned, is a REST API for XMA. And not just a REST API, but we also have the Splunk HTTP event collector, which is a natural integration into Splunk. So you no longer have to rely on syslog. Whereas, like I said, in the past, um, most customers would use syslog using either TCP or UDP. I hope you're not using UDP, but there's customers out there that do, or TCP. There's a lot of overhead with TCP. It's not always a viable option. It, they'll have challenges with being able to scale data. There's performance issues. It's a little more complex to use than the technologies that are available now. And security can be enhanced. So if you see this box in the bottom right-hand corner, this is the new enhancement to Merge Audit, is we've got a new REST sender that will also provide Splunk, Splunk HEC connectivity into, um, into your Splunk environment. So now you've got a choice. Do you want to send using syslog or do you want to send using REST? You send using REST, you've also got support for a JSON as well, out of the box, simplifying this entire process. Performance is going to be much more optimized. You're going to be able to handle larger volume of events at a higher velocity. You're going to be able to scale out. So you're not bottlenecked into just whatever capabilities TCP has. Now you've got uh, flexibility using REST or, or the Splunk HEC collector. This will be available, I believe, in, uh, right around May of this year. So we're just on the final stages of releasing this product. So look out for this. Look out for our, our announcements. If you're not following our LinkedIn, make sure you go to LinkedIn. Click on the follow button for Zypro to get updates on when this will, will be available. 
these are some screenshots of what you can do once the data is in Splunk. So like I said, go to our website, check out that webinar on the top five use cases, nonstop use cases that once uh, for Splunk. So once you get the data from merged audit into Splunk, you're going to open up a whole new world for yourself. Now, don't think of it as you're creating new problems or, you know, the, the capabilities you've got here of what you can do once that data is in there, you're going to go, wow, you know, all the graphs and charts and all the strength of, of Splunk now can be uh, addressed with nonstop data. Okay. That's the enhancement to Zygate Merge Audit. Now let's talk about Security One and what we're doing around zero trust and primarily ransomware protection. This is a very, very hot topic. And this was a very hot topic in 2022 and it's gonna continue into 2023. So Zygate Security One gives you all of the components necessary to be able to harden and monitor your system in real time, but that's not good enough. It doesn't make sense to just put a tool in there and think you're protected against ransomware. Ransomware is really uh, an objective. Ransomware protection is an objective. It's not just, I've solved that problem with a tool in place. No, you've got to have a proper strategy in place to be able to protect against ransomware. And I'm telling you right now, if you think ransomware is not possible on nonstop, you are 100% wrong. It is absolutely possible to infect a nonstop system with ransomware. All it takes is running OpenSSL or some other encryption uh, algorithm against a set of files or a volume, taking the key you use to encrypt those files and throwing it away. Now imagine doing that at mass scale. It's absolutely possible. Now what's hidden the nonstop for so long is it's, it's always been this box in the corner. You know, nobody knows about it, nobody touches it, it does what it does, no longer the case. This new generation of CTOs and CIOs emphasize making sure that all of their IT assets can be accessible and managed and secured the same way. So there's no reason to have a separate process for nonstop as you do for open systems. That's why the visibility for nonstop is becoming elevated. That's why ransomware protection becomes critical for 2023 for nonstop systems. So what is Zypro doing and how can we give you, our customers, the tools to be able to start thinking about what your ransomware cyber resiliency program is going to look like. We're not trying to boil the ocean here, but let me give you a primer on the, the way you can go about this. The very first thing you've got to do is identify your assets. You've got to know what assets, what data, what systems, what applications, what workflows you have in place because you can't take a sledgehammer to crack a peanut. You've got to know exactly what you're trying to protect and then make sure the applicable technology gets put into place to be able to protect it. Some things are extremely sensitive. Some things might not be as sensitive, but you won't, you, there's always a trade-off between security and user experience. So you can't take and apply the same technology you would use to protect sensitive files for files that might not be as sensitive or applications that might not be as sensitive. You're going to impact the users and all that's going to do is create challenges for them initially, but they're going to find ways to work, work around it. So the very first step in any type of cyber resiliency program, primarily around ransomware protection, is identifying your assets. Now, Zypro can help you with this. We've got a security gap assessment service that will go through, evaluate your systems, your data, your applications, your users, your environment, everything on your system, and generate a report. Now, we use that report as our roadmap on what to do next is how we're going to prioritize the efforts to be able to secure your environment and monitor it and be able to recover from it. This is critical. If you think you're going to put ransomware protection in place and not do this, you're setting yourself up for failure. You've got to be able to identify your assets first to know what you're protecting, what you need to protect to make sure the right protection goes into place. Now, once we've done that, and only then can we start thinking about a protection methodology, and this is where our security hardening service comes into play, we'll, uh, we piggyback off the gap assessment and we'll say, okay, these are the things we identified. These are the things that uh, the company has said are most critical to them. Now we can start mapping security controls to those findings and start closing the windows, locking the doors, making sure everything is airtight 
to reduce the attack surface against ransomware and malware. That's the key here, is making sure we're not eliminating the ability to deploy ransomware. We're minimizing the attack surface where ransomware can come through. Now, this very first stage, we've always been able to identify things that a customer go, wow, I didn't realize that was happening in my environment. It's there. It happens every single time, not just in the nonstop world, in every IT environment. Is there things happening in your environment that you don't know about? This will uncover most of that. Okay, so once you're, we've identified your assets, once we've protected your assets, only then can we start putting up the security cameras and the detection tools. Now, this will give you all of the increased monitoring visibility in real time of what's happening in your environment. Somebody's going to infect your nonstop system with ransomware, malware, virus, whatever, something malicious. They're likely going to drop an object on your system. They're going to introduce a new file, a new process, something that wasn't previously there. Something's going to change for that ransomware activity or that malware to be introduced into your environment. This is the strength of Security One. The second a new object is introduced into your system that we determine is out of the ordinary, you're being notified. Now think about this, without Security One and the data it's able to generate, where is that information going to come from? Where are you going to get visibility into what's happening in your system? Security One is the only tool in the market that not only generates the data necessary for this type of alerting, but will give you a real-time response into what's happening. So you'll know the second something is introduced into your environment. And then you can respond. You can take that data and you can integrate it with a SIM, you can, uh, your Splunk, your radar, what have you. You can integrate it with a SOAR, an orchestration tool for automated response. It can action your team to be able to get in there and start taking countermeasures to prevent that, that ransomware from proliferating through the rest of the system. But it's giving you the ability to have a fighting chance. It's also time stamping the exact time where that object was introduced into your environment and started working its way through your system. So you know exactly when you need to, or where you need to recover from. Now, any one of these individually is not ransomware protection. You need this entire process, tools, technology, services, knowledge, to be able to put true ransomware protection in your environment. Any vendor that says, sure, install this tool and you're protected against ransomware, is likely not giving you uh, the complete picture. So be, uh, be aware. These are the things you need to focus on when it comes to ransomware protection. If you need more information on us, please reach out. We'd be more than happy to expand on this discussion. Okay, and Security One's focus is going to be zero trust and ransomware protection in 2023. So you're going to see some enhancements around our compliance rule packs. You're going to be able to introduce new compliance frameworks into Security One without having to reinstall the entire program. So if you're familiar with things like WordPress, where you can install plugins without installing, reinstalling the entire WordPress site, it's exactly that. We'll give you a rule pack. You go into Security One, upload it. And now you've got a new set of rules that you can evaluate against. We're going to enhance the ransomware detection capabilities, more real time, more analytics, more data to be able to do faster alerting for ransomware protection. We're introducing Linux support. So that means you can run Security One on Windows or on Linux. This is important in some environments where you want to run Security One on premise, whereas previously you needed Windows infrastructure. Now you can run it on Linux infrastructure. We'll be focusing on AWS and Azure optimization. Like I said, you can run it in the cloud, private cloud or Zyper cloud. There'll be some optimizations around there. You'll see some common event format improvements. I know that's uh, redundant. I probably should have said CEF improvements, not CEF format improvements. Uh, we're introducing the ability to do file integrity monitoring, comparing against volume. So you can take a volume, compare it against another volume and see the differences between them. You can also do those across systems. There'll be new enhanced keystroke logging reports. So you'll see all of the activity, the command activity that a user uh, was issued. Um, you'll be able to download new forms of data, um, 
You'll be able to disable, enable and disable requirements. If certain compliance rules don't apply in your environment, you can go through and disable those. This is big is we're going to be continuing our conversion from Microsoft SQL to Mongo. So Mongo is free and uh, an open source, whereas Microsoft SQL requires, a, in some cases, a very expensive enterprise license. So we want to get away and lower the total cost of ownership for Security One. So we're going to continue the migration away from Microsoft SQL. And we're also going to introduce uh, Kafka for being able to consume XMA messages as well. So more to come there. Uh, like I said, follow our LinkedIn, get the updates, get informed, and stay current. Okay, uh, switching gears, talking about authentication improvements to XUA. And this has been something that a lot of customers have been asking us about is support for additional multi-factor authentication providers. Up to this point, we could support RSA Secure ID for multi-factor. We could support Radius for multi-factor. And if you had uh, XUA configured with Active Directory, and if your Active Directory was then configured with an MFA provider, we could support that as well. So in essence, you can say we support all of these MFA providers already, but you would have to have XUA connected to uh, Active Directory to take advantage of that. We're adding an organic integration into all of these uh, providers. So we're introducing OIDC, SAML, OAuth2, and TOTP, which are new modern authentic user authentication and identity authentication technologies into XUA. This will give you the ability to configure XUA to talk to every one of these providers individually without having to go through Active Directory. Now, this will be important for your operating system, but also important for your applications as well. Remember that library I mentioned uh, a few slides ago? that can uh, introduce MFA capabilities into your nonstop applications. Now your nonstop applications can also use any one of these providers for MFA without having to go through Active Directory. We'll support Ping, Duo, Delinea, Okta. Um, Delinea used to be formerly Tychotic and Centrify, and then they rebrand themselves as Delinea. But basically any provider that supports these standard protocols that I've got listed up here, we'll be able to integrate with. So again, follow our LinkedIn, stay tuned, uh, more to come on these enhancements. Okay, and our Zygate Identity Connector. Most of you are already using this product to integrate with your nonstop systems with SailPoint and integrate with CyberArk. So we've got some enhancements coming on the SailPoint side. We're going to be able to do group aggregation. So meaning being able to pull the entitlements from Safeguard into SailPoint. We're going to be simplifying the user experience, making it easier to install, upgrade, and be able to interact with XIC. And the new functionality that a lot of you have been asking for is support for Base24 and other nonstop applications. Right now, the XIC integration is with the operating system. So you get your safeguard users into SailPoint. But on top of your, your operating system, you've got your workloads, your applications, or, or what have you. Those also have users. Those also have entitlements. So the enhancement here is be, be, to be able to provision and deprovision your application user IDs with your identities in SailPoint. So just like in SailPoint right now, where you can go in, select nonstop as an option and automatically have a user provisioned into nonstop. Now you'll have base 24 as an option in SailPoint. So you can automatically provision a base 24 user right into the application or deprovision that user right out of the application. That's coming later on this year, where it's already being worked on. And we've got some additional updates around Safeguard Manager uh, and SQL Express, which is our database management tool. HP has released SQL MX version 3.81, as well as their uh, SQL MX for the cloud. So we're going to be able to support all of the enhancements around SQL MX 3.81. Support for native blobs, clobs. We'll have some runtime statistics that'll give more visibility into what's happening in your environment. Um, be able to take advantage of row counts, um, PLMX functionality, and built-in functions that are also part of 3.8.1.
Okay, just highlighting our roadmap again, this session will be posted on our website. So uh, anything I covered today, you know, uh, the, the, uh, the roadmap might change given circumstances. So this is our roadmap for 2023, but delivery dates might change. Just be aware of that. But this is the, the areas that we're focusing on for this year. With that, thank you very much. I hope you found this informative. I know we went through a lot very, very quickly. So if there's any questions, I'm happy to take them right now. Otherwise, feel free to follow up with me personally or follow, but regardless, stay informed, stay aware, follow our Twitter, follow our LinkedIn. We've got all of these webinars, very, very informative topics posted on our YouTube channel. And you can always email me. I'm happy to expand on any one of these topics. So I appreciate everybody's time. Like I said, I hope you found it informative and happy to answer some questions now.